And welcome back, everybody, to WTL, Where's the Line, Nebraska's first and only sports betting show. I'm your host, Andy Class, and joined by Jabron. Oh, wow. <laughs> the Parley You got Pounder. it. We're back. We're back. Yes, we are. We're back in a big way. We took a little time off there. Yeah. You know, we had to, but we did have that live show at the Brewing Company. For sure. That was fantastic. Yeah, we had our, you know, NASCAR, you know, experts out there because, you know, we're we're just, you yeah, know, yeah. novice fans of NASCAR. Right, right, we right, brought right. the experts out. They told us who was going to win. Our our buddy Robert actually yep. did call who was going to win the he whole did. entire thing, Kyle Busch. So did. good on Robert. And, and, you know, there's more to it than just turning left. We figured that out to, to, to NASCAR. We I, I don't out. know if I've yeah. learned that, but yes. <laughs> and we, we're, we're bringing the big guns here. Yeah. We got a sports writer here with the right way, right? Jeremy Odom. Jeremy, how are you doing tonight? I'm fantastic. Oh, great. I'm, I'm next to Mr. Showtime. The, the, the Parlay Mr. Powder. Powder. Yeah, the Parlay yeah Mr. Powder. Showtime, the Laker. And I think you had a little poll here, so I guess that's where we're going to start with his Lakers. Yes, sir. And LeBron James. Game two. We're talking game two tonight, May the 4th. Yeah. May the 4th be with all of you, May the by 4th the way. be with you. Uh, 9 o'clock Eastern, tip-off on ESPN over on the Mothership Warriors. What I'm looking at here is a consensus, a six-point favorite. money line 260, total 227 and a half. Yeah. A lot of people were talking about hitting those unders. Lakers had different ideas in game one. For sure. What are you thinking here, Javon? Well, the Warriors simply had no answer for the Anthony Davis. He constantly bullied the Warriors yeah, in did. a big way yeah. on offense and on the rebounding side of things. Yeah. So... The Warriors will combat that with, you know, a little bit, you know, doubling down on Anthony Davis and stuff like mm-hmm. that. But that will only open up more things for LeBron James and D'Angelo Russell. So the Warriors are going to have to figure out some way to combat that in a different way. That doesn't mean putting the ball into LeBron James' hands where he can drive because that's going to be destruction for the Warriors as well. That being said, I do think the Warriors probably come back <laughs> with go. a fierce shooting night <laughs> yeah, and yeah. just get the job done, you know. By six points, though. But No, I don't think so. I think no. it's going to be really, oh, really, really close at the end of the game. It's going to be one of those, you know, Warriors are up by two. You know, LeBron probably yeah. misses a three or something to lose the game by two or three points. I really think Steph has a huge yeah. game. But my best bet of the game, because I don't know if I want to jump on either side oh. of this, Andy, it's Clay Thompson over four and a half, three point makes. Right now, okay. it's at a plus 100. That's plus money. That is going to hit. Clay okay. Thompson is All going right. to have a big game, probably at least 25 points, maybe 30. You know, you didn't have a bad game, game one. For uh, sure. Uh, Jeremy, where where do you kind of fall on this one? Because yeah, there's a lot of moving parts here. Yeah. Uh, really, a goofy stat line. Or if you look at the the box sheet numbers, I think uh, Golden State shot something like 63, 64 yeah. three pointers. Only six field goal attempts. Uh, not field goal attempts. Free throw attempts. Yeah, you're not going to win many games, especially in playoff basketball. Uh, and you could just tell they were settling for shots. A lot of people are talking about the fatigue maybe coming off a Game 7 victory. For sure. They just weren't ready to go. Lakers were. Game 7 was big for the Warriors and then the mind games that LeBron dealt with in in the previous series. But this one's got a Steph Curry game written all over it. I like like it close, though. I think you're right. I think Lakers plus 6. But this has Steph Curry game written all over it, tie the series, and then move forward from there. Yeah, for sure, Andy, and I like exactly what he's saying. Uh, right now, for player props, Steph Curry points over 30 and a half is at a minus 125, so you know a lot of money is going in oh, yeah. on that. Steph yeah. probably going to have over 30 points, so that is a good nugget as well. Uh, his his three-pointers is sitting over, over five and a half uh, at plus 127. They just broke a record, Andy, in Game 1 to have mm-hmm. the only team ever to have six players hit Six or more three pointers, that being Steph Curry, Clay Thompson, and Jordan Poole. So <laughs> right. these guys can shoot. Uh, it was crazy that the Lakers were able to withstand that run at the end. Yeah. Uh, but it, thank God they were up by enough. Uh, thank to, God. Yeah. Yeah. I'm a Laker homer, <laughs> and we needed to get one at Golden State. I don't think we'll get two. So I believe the Warriors will win. Lakers cover. Clay over threes. That's also going to play a big part in this one. I feel that. Uh... Uh, Lakers can kind of take their foot off the gas here. They already got one. Yeah. They already got one in San Francisco. They don't need to press here. Everything's uh, gravy now. Everything's yep. gravy until they get back 
to L.A. Yep. A little side note here. You know, everyone was smacking those unders, smacking those yeah. unders in game one. LeBron James, of course, LeBron James. LeBron James. Hit a 22, 23-foot fadeaway. You saw this at the end of the first sure. half. That actually ended up smacking that over, over for the first time. Of course, he did. Of course yeah. he did. <laughs> of, yeah, of course he had to do He's that. for the people. He's <laughs> for the people. <laughs> All right, let's move on to... Yeah. Game three, Nuggets versus the Suns. That's Friday night, May 5th, 10 o'clock Eastern. Uh, Tip-off on ESPN. Once again, Suns back up against the wall, but they are a favorite. Three-and-a-half point money line at minus 170. That total, 224-and-a-half. I'm seeing a lot of consensus. Nuggets, I kind of like that plus money line at plus 143, though. And you have to. Joker's performance served yeah. as you know, just a highlight reel in game two, Andy. And what really makes you uneasy for the Suns in this game Mm -hmm. is Chris Paul left the game with a groin injury and his status moving forward remains up in the air. We've seen this from Chris Paul from the last 10 years in the playoffs. (laughs) He's talking about never getting a championship, never never getting to the finals, all this kind of stuff. Yeah. Yeah, it's because you don't play when it matters most. So... I do like the Suns to win this game just because they, uh. they absolutely have to. They absolutely have to. So I yeah. see Durant going for 40, you know, Booker right behind him. So they really need to get in the bag here and find something to do. But I would take the Suns' money line on this game. Once again, Jeremy, this was kind of an oddball box score where it was 97-87. Booker got his 35 points and for they sure. still lost by 10 points. Yeah. I mean, how are you viewing game two here? Chris Paul's got to play. He's day-to-day with the left groin strain, but he will be in the game. Mm -hmm. Um, Their back's against the wall, like you said. They're going to avoid the sweep. I like the Suns here, um, even though they're not going to win the series. I do like the Suns here just because Chris Paul will put himself on the court. And, you know, if he's going to come out of the game, he'll find someone to throw his body into. So (laughs) you know that there's going to be a way to get him out of the game if they have to. Uh, What do you feel about that uh, over-under, the total there at 224, 225? Uh, depending on where you get that number. Obviously, the unders hit and hit hard. For sure. <laughs> in the previous but game. if the Phoenix Suns want to win this game, this has to go over that 224 okay. and a half. So Durant, Booker, Aiton, Paul, they need to think about one thing and one thing only, and that is scoring and trying to make the Joker take difficult shots because he's just been looking like he it's just men among boys out there. Yeah, Him yeah. and Jamal Murray doing the best two-man game in the NBA right now, mm-hmm. so it's it's been it's been really hard for the Phoenix Suns, but at home I think they get it done, especially in Game Three. They have to, right? They like, have to. Like, like they you, have you to. said, I mean, but uh, the Joker, thirty nine points. I mean, we've run out of things to say about this guy because it's the man. night and night, and you know what's coming too. Exactly. You know he's going to catch the ball up top. Two dribbles, this, this, lay it in. Like, lay it's, in it's give insane. It up. Yeah, it's, it's insane, Andy, and he probably should have won his third in a row MVP. Yeah, yeah, they yeah. did give it to Embiid. I did like that Embiid got his finally. Yeah. They had similar numbers. Uh, Philly, you know, finally got their guy in MVP. I mm-hmm. like that, but everything retrospect, Joker probably <laughs> should have got third in a row just because right. they're number one in the West. But one tidbit I want to say, Andy, is Phoenix has – also won five of the last six home games against Denver, so they do play well okay. in Phoenix against this team. So I really like Phoenix to come in here just because they have to. I think they're winning by a slim margin there, you know, in game two at yeah. the break. They just couldn't, you know, keep everything in front of them. And what about the the, the style play Denver uses as far as being unselfish? Murray, he's an all-star, right? He yes. only had 10 points, but he didn't care. It doesn't matter. Nope. The team was up by 10. Joker will take 10 points, too. He doesn't care as long as yeah. it's getting in the bucket and they're winning the game. That's what's so dangerous about this team. There's yeah. no egos. They check them at the door. Uh, it's just fun basketball to watch. It's a total throwback team. Jeremy, we love the tidbits. You heard a tidbit from Jabron the Parlay Pounder. You got one for us on this one? You know, this is one of the com- uh, only complete teams, I think, in the yeah. West. So mm. if you're looking at a team that's going to make a run and probably not going to push it too far when they yeah. don't have to, this is probably it right here. Yeah. That's why I think I like the Suns. I like the over. But um, <clears throat> this is one of the few complete teams. Yeah. Right. Um, that's that's what I love about them. For sure. So we, we kind of like Phoenix at home here. Phoenix we think at the home Phoenix, in the but, over. But do you think the Nuggets can wrap it up within five or six games? I think it's going to be yep. six just because yeah. I think the Suns have enough talent to push it that far. But the Nuggets are coming out with this series, which, uh, you know, yeah. w- would have been very intriguing hey. 
at the start of the playoffs. We've been talking about Denver a lot this season, and we've been talking about them for good reason, and you're seeing why here in the playoffs. For sure. All right, we got time for one more here. Let's do it. Knicks versus Heat. This is Game 3. That is Saturday, May 6th. That's at 3.30 Eastern. Tip-off on ABC. Yeah. The Heat, a three-point favorite. Yeah. Money line minus 165 and a half. Knicks plus 140. Yeah. And that over-under is really low. 208, 208 and a half? Well, two of the du- two of the best defensive teams <laughs> in, you know, the Eastern Conference, obviously going tit for tat here. Yeah, yeah. The crazy thing about this series, Andy, is the best player on the Knicks sat out game one, so the Heat got that one. <clears throat> best player yeah. on the Heat sat out in game two, so the Knicks got that one. So it's crazy to you just gotta see who's playing that night. Is Jimmy Butler good to go? Is Julius Randle good to go? I think they both will be for game yep. three. And uh if that is the case, I like the Heat to take back the game in Miami. Mm. Jimmy G was sitting there that whole game yeah. at Madison yeah. Square Garden just grinning ear to ear, ready to get back out <laughs> there and take this team over. Playoff Jimmy is no joke. They take down the Knicks in game three, but my best bet, Andy. Ooh, we got a best bet. Julius Randle, over seven and a half rebounds at plus money right now. That is going to happen. Julius Randle will get 15 plus rebounds against the Heat here. Ooh. It's only seven and a half right now at plus money. Go lock that in right now if you can. Man, he had a solid game too. 25 points. I'm looking at here. 12 rebounds. Yes, Jeremy, you got a best bet? I'm thinking this game it's going to be good on good. Yeah. Okay. Uh-huh. So Jimmy Butler is going to be out there. I love the over on this. The yeah. 20, 208 and a half is what I've seen, and I love the over. It's going to be easy money. I yeah. also think the Heat cover. Yes, Three. I do too. Um, so mm. this is going to be wow. a spe- this is a special team right now in the East that is. Uh, is making a run even out of the eight. They just kind of caught lightning in a bottle. They did. You, you want to ride this it, lightning? It's the but bubble that's what team. You do. It's yes. the bubble team. It's back. <laughs> yep. Same with the Lakers. It's it's the, the same team as the bubble. Well, let's take a quick minute to recognize one of our fabulous partners as the Nebraska Brewing Company. We've been enjoying the smooth, easy-drinking Ale Storm, the official beer of Omaha's AAA baseball team, precisely crafted with Pilsner malt and Sterling hops, making it the perfect summer baseball beer. Could you agree? Oh, absolutely. Absolutely. Right. Ale Storm. We just need the weather you know, to help us out. <laughs> yep. But that's not going to slow down the Ale Storm. It will not. <laughs> Don't go in there, folks. This is WTL. And welcome back, everybody, to WTL, Where's the Line, Nebraska's first and only sports betting show. I'm your host, and D. Class, and joined by Jabron. Ooh, the Parley <laughs> Pounder. You got it. And I'm also joined by, or we are joined by, yeah. Jeremy Odom. You can find him on Twitter at J-O from Nebraska, right? Got Correct. that right? Now, Correct. Jeremy, you're a man of many talents, and uh, you do a couple of different things here. You're you're also a stand up comedian, is that correct? I mean, that's that's what I call myself. I okay. mean, the, the <laughs> audience judges if I'm actually funny oh, enough well. to be a comedian. But yeah, hey man, uh, getting up on stage like that that's a uh, takes a little bit of grit, takes a little nerve, doesn't it? Yes, it does. And then you're it is then something you're, special. Yes. Yeah, yeah. And then you're trying to keep it light and funny. Yeah. Oh man, I, I would. I think I would clam up. Yeah, we're easy. We're hiding behind the mic here, and you know, behind the you guys have the, the best platform, gig. So yeah. yeah. So all right. Well. I, now that the dust has settled, yeah. you know, this is a Nebraska sports betting show, and the transfer portal is closed again, yeah. spring games or What are you guys' thoughts or your takeaways from, from that spring game? Yeah, my, my big thing, Andy, is that Sims, the QB, mm-hmm. obviously separated gonna... himself from the rest of the group. Right. He, you know, came out. We, we didn't get to see a lot of them or whatever, Andy, but there was enough there that made Casey want to— Leave. Leave, for enter, sure. Enter the get in, portal. Get in the yeah. portal. But one thing that, you know, stats that stuck out for Jeff Sims was he's 9 for 13, 138 yards passing, no TDs, no picks, but it was a windy day, Andy. Yeah, yeah. And he clearly yeah. had the best control in accuracy mm-hmm. of our quarterback. So he's a big guy. I like what Matt Rule said about him. He's a he's a passer that can run, not the other way around. Right, right. He's a big yep. guy. He's a big passer that has 4-4 speed. So I really liked what I saw out of him, and I'm I'm – Fully drinking the Kool Aid on Jeff Sims to be the starting quarterback for the Nebraska Cornhuskers this coming season. I thought you were going to take it as far as to say he's your new Heisman frontrunner. <laughs> Jeremy, where are you at with that? I love a guy who can throw the football, that's for sure. For but sure. it was on the defensive side of the ball that I was most impressed. And I oh. love the spring game. You can see the young uh-huh. guys. We had a couple of freshmen at def- defensive end. Um, I know I'm going to screw up uh, pronouncing their names here, but Len Hart, 
and there we go. Yep. Uman Melon. Okay. Prince okay. Will Uman Melon. Um, they showed out, and I love seeing you know some action plays from them and, and seeing what we could have in the future. So I was very impressed by them. And how about the local guy, uh, Noonan? Yeah, I mean, Noonan. he was flashing at times, and I mean, he is a true, true freshman. So a lot to, lot to like, uh, there, but it was like we were in mid-season form with, what, seven or eight, eight fumbles? Eight fumbles. And you, you, you already mentioned it. Uh, the weather was terrible. Yeah. But that's playing in the Big Ten, right? That's, that's, Big that's playing Ten in the football. Big Ten West. So like, I, 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 I hate to make excuses already in the spring game for these guys. I, I don't know. Is that is that something to be concerned with or not really? Well, it's definitely something to be concerned with, Andy. And the other th- the other concerning thing to me is there's nobody in that running back room that really took up that haunch and said they're going to be our starting running back. Uh, we had a couple guys that did you know pretty good. Ramir Johnson had a couple nice start and stop and start runs. Did. Yeah, uh, you know obviously Anthony Grant had a few nice you know hard ones up the gut and everything, and then Gabe Irvin Jr. obviously got in the end zone late there. But it's uh. You know, nobody took up that mantle, and we know is going to be that starting running back. Yeah. When you start start thinking about Husker football back when we were good, you know, yeah. all the way back when we were good, it always well, started with the offensive line and that definitely Division One top prospect running back. Yeah, yeah. So that's what I like yeah. to see. I would like somebody to you know make it you know mm-hmm. big for us and say that this guy is the guy to beat. Yeah, and Jeremy, to his point, Nebraska was good in the '60s, '70s, '80s, '90s, early 2000s, mid 2000s there for a little. Little bit, and we always had great running backs. Roy Halu Jr., you know, I think was part of that Amir For Abdullah, sure. you know, Amir, that Burkhead. last wave. Uh, do you, I think Anthony Grant is going to step up? Yeah. And we also had the room is less crowded now, uh, because we just had AJ uh enter into the portal Alan. here, yep. Allen. Yep, so AJ Allen. So, uh, I don't know what do you have a feel for or an idea of what running back you like or who well, you the, think might take it? Grant's gonna be the guy, yeah. I, mean, I, okay. I just love it. We've okay. seen him, it's proven. But the thing is, in the spring game, you can mm-hmm. see where we need to improve, you can see where our weakness is, and if. Ball support, yeah. you know, ball security is going to yep. be an issue. That's that's exactly what Rule's going to look at, and it's going to be a pinpoint. But I'm not concerned about the weather at all. I mean, okay. they'll get used to that. For They're sure. going to practice for that. But mm-hmm. I love Grant. I think he's going to be our playmaker. Heck okay. yeah. Well, this is another year where Nebraska's leading passer or receiver or rusher is out of the program. Yeah. <laughs> you know, with, uh, start from scratch. Start from scratch again. Uh, uh, but it's not like we're starting from square one with Jeff Sims. You already mentioned him, uh, the quarterback. But there's still this trend that I can't stand with Nebraska where a youngster has a great season on the offensive end and then he's out the door. Is that something to be concerned about? Yeah. Obviously, we everybody would like to see Trey Palmer back here. Obviously, you got, <laughs> well, you know, but you know what I mean. Like, yeah, it would be. Nice if Casey was still here and yeah. he was, you know, the returning star and everything. But Jeff Sims, like you said, Georgia Tech transfer, transfer had a really good year. You know, he's. I do believe that he's ready to come in here and mm-hmm. make a statement. He was so excited about the crowd at the spring game. Oh, he's yeah. so excited about the fans. Mm-hmm. He's never seen anything like that. So I do believe he's, you know, yeah. got big red in his heart and he's ready to go. So the, you know, the biggest concern, Andy, is obviously the offensive line depth, including the three incoming fr- freshmen in walk-ons. <laughs> there are currently 18 <laughs> rostered, but they had to work out through spring with only 10, uh, yeah. unless another body or two can be found in the portal. You know, yeah. uh, this may be a problem that, you know, we can't address until the next recruiting cycle so we need that, that portal to open back yeah, up that, <laughs> that's that's the whole thing is o-line depth because that's what's going to make this whole room of running backs jeff sims you mm-hmm. know our new tight ends our new wide receivers that yeah. makes that all go so it's o-line depth yeah. or we're right back into the same thing that we were in last year yeah crummy weather the whole nine yards and we still had over 66 thousand people there for the spring game pretty impressive stuff you like the defense jeremy let's talk some of these odds because i mean we are a sports betting show yeah. uh everyone's drinking the kool-aid for sure Lines are starting to come out seven and a half wins are the huskers what has anybody seen other than jeff sims going eight for ten or whatever yep. to make me think that they're gonna win four more games than the last two years they're gonna win this they're gonna win eight games you're telling me the same as the last two years combined with yeah. a new coaching staff, new quarterback, completely new defense. And, oh, by the way, you're arguably your best young defender is now placed for Michigan, the home state grown kid in Ernest Hausman. is up in Ann Arbor now. Yeah, I mean, for sure what everybody's looking at, Andy, is that 
it seems like the Big Ten got a little weaker, and definitely mm-hmm. our schedule got a lot weaker than it was just a season ago. We're playing people at the end back side of the season like Maryland, Purdue, Michigan State, Northwestern, and Illinois mm-hmm. that are supposed to all take a step back this year, as in a step forward like Nebraska is projected to do, like you know the bookies are saying. So, so all I right. do understand that, but what really, really is you know the big kicker here Andy is getting off to a fast start like we didn't last year. We play Minnesota that first Thursday of the season mm-hmm. in Minnesota. Mm-hmm. We have to win that game have to win. and then we <laughs> jump on the road again to Colorado the next week. It's all about starting fast here yeah, and we yeah. need to have at least a win before we come back to Lincoln against Northern Illinois and LA Tech. So those are the two games that are really circled on my book of the first two games. We have to come out with at least one win to get that seven and a half. So Jeremy Jabron is smacking the over. Uh, Colorado has a new coach, I heard. Prop time! <laughs> How do you feel about that seven and a half? <laughs> seven and a half is a little high. The bookmakers love Nebraska, <laughs> yeah. but here's the difference. Here's what we didn't have a few years ago when the line was seven and a half. Yeah. We got Frank Solich back. Boom! Okay. Ooh, okay. The curse is over. The curse is over. Solich is in the mix. All okay, right. We've had some continuity before, and we didn't get the wins. Yeah. I'm liking it this year, so I'm taking the over as well. Oh, And, and Herbie's back, right? Herbie's the back. The original yep. Herbie, and did you see that? In all sports. That freaking cannon he was firing? Yeah. <laughs> at, at halftime there, it was like a double He's Gatlin up. gun. Yeah. Yeah, so um, there was also a line that uh, predicting here a little bit, but plus 1,400 was uh, the line to win the Big Ten. Um, that was last year where the total was at 7.5 once again. Yeah. Uh, I mean, is it worth a flyer? Yeah, so that's what it was last year, Andy. I'm seeing it for anywhere from plus 2,500 to plus 6,000 right now. So if you wow. are drinking the Kool-Aid, jump out, to, jump out to another, you know, <laughs> jump out to one of those apps, you know, and, and get that plus 6,000 if you think that Nebraska has a real legitimate shot at winning the Big Ten. Do I? <laughs> Probably not when you got people like Ohio State at a plus 165 to win the Big Ten, <laughs> Michigan <laughs> at a plus 175 the Big Ten, Riddle. and then obviously you got you know Penn State, Wisconsin, and Iowa all above the Huskers there with a lot better odds. So uh, I do like the Huskers to progress uh-huh. this year. Uh, maybe get that eight wins, but to win the Big Ten, I don't think so. I don't know. You gotta like the juice though, right, Jeremy? You gotta. You know, if there's enough sugar in the Kool Aid, I'll drink it. But I, I'm not liking it this time. They're not gonna win the Big Ten. But... What about the Big Ten West? Well, yes. I, yeah, I, let's I, compete. I, I haven't seen. I haven't no, seen they one haven't of those put lines out yet. anything yeah. for that. Yeah, but uh, I think that's very much uh, something that we could, you know, look at. But uh, winning the Big Ten outright, that would be pretty tough for the Huskers this year, especially with how top heavy. With Ohio State and Michigan, uh, that, the Big Ten is. What that guy say on uh, the Office? If they give you plus six thousand odds, always take. Yeah. <laughs> if we're, John we're, Cougar <laughs> Mellencamp ever wins an Oscar, I'm going to be a very rich man. <laughs> yeah. yeah, you don't have to take that bet, Oscar fans. <laughs> you do not yeah, have to. We, take we just it. want to put that little disclaimer out there, even though it's better odds uh, than last year. Yes, and sir. And everyone's drinking the Kool Aid. It is a lot of fun. We this I think we've won twenty five, twenty six off seasons in a row now. Yeah. So, oh yeah. yeah. Reigning defending. I'd Drank the Kool Aid yep. every single off season. National it, champs. It tastes good every off season. You know, Michigan fans. It reminds me of '97, right? They always like, "Oh, we're the national champions." Yeah. And they they always think that they win the off season. It's like, no, 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 you haven't been in the Lincoln or Omaha, <laughs> Carney, listening to you know local yeah, talk us. radio. Yeah. yeah. When you get to wear red in the summer, when we have five <laughs> national championships and nothing on the line, it's so a beautiful nice. thing. It's so nice. There we go. And I thought when you said, well, here's the kicker, I thought you were going to talk about our kickers. But you didn't. So <laughs> no. Good, good on you there. Uh, I can't talk about that yet. I don't know which way that's leaning. <laughs> Let's take a quick minute to recognize one of our fabulous partners, and that is the Stock and Rod Company, an outdoor lifestyle brand for those seeking adventure. Whether it's hunting, fishing, hiking, they got you covered. Visit StockandRod.com to get your wild game on. Don't go anywhere. This is WTL. Yeah, welcome back, everybody, to WTL. Where's the line? Nebraska's first and only sports betting show. I'm your host, and Class, and joined by Gibran. Oh, 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 the Parlay Pounder. You got it. We're back. Yes, we are, and we are back with the man, Jeremy Odom. Jeremy, how you doing? I'm fantastic. You hanging I'm, in there? I've got some bets going here. That yes, I think sir. I'm going to make some money from you guys. So there that's what we it's go. all about. 
It's all about going to that ticket window and cashing out. Yep, getting the green. After listening to a little WTL. And, you know, uh, something happened in Kansas City uh, yeah. over the weekend. Big event. Uh, yeah, there were some people down there, I suppose, <laughs> like a four-day television event called yeah. the NFL Draft. Yes, sir. And we got to dive right into it, too. Uh, a lot of line movements. Not too much movement as far as over-unders, but... Let's run down some of the teams that we really like to talk about throughout the season, the local teams, uh, the Chiefs, of course, the Broncos, and the Vikings. And let's start right there with the Kansas City Chiefs, Jabron. A lot of people gave them an A, A plus, A minus. Yeah. Uh, Everyone really liked how they addressed the defense. They got their edge rushers. They also got a pretty nice receiver in Rashi Rice, a speedster. I mean, he just fits perfect. Yeah. what Reed likes to do. Uh, what'd you make of the Chiefs? Yeah, draft? for sure. Um, I don't like giving them an A, Andy, but like uh, I, I think a solid mm-hmm. B, B plus is definitely good for the Chiefs. Okay. And definitely with you know them having the last pick in the first round, it's hard to get right. above that yeah, yeah. and trying to get to that A, you know, draft size. Uh, mm-hmm. Obviously, mm-hmm. their team overall is an A plus because they are the <laughs> Super Bowl champions. Um, no, I like what they did with Uzama. As you know, a potential good pass rusher, yep. but the Chiefs might have, you know, I think they might have found, you know, better value in other prospects. But Rice could be the steal of the draft, like you said, immediate co- yeah. uh, contributor in the uh, intermediate passing game, joining Kadarius Tony, for whom they traded a third rounder for last fall. Mm-hmm. Uh, so I did like what Kansas City did. I'll give them a B plus, but. With their line total right now at eleven and a half wins, I mean, you pretty much have to say that's an over bet because yeah. it's the Kansas State Chiefs. Mm-hmm. Everybody was down on them last year. They made yeah. everybody shut up yeah, with did. that. Yeah. Uh, Twelve wins, I don't think, is a stretch for the Chiefs. The one that I want to talk about is them going back to back plus six hundred to win the Super Bowl this year, Ooh. and I believe that's good. It, you know, they're the you know the odds on favorite, but. That's good value for back as good a team back. they are. Back to back. Back to back. Jeremy, what did you make of that? Are we forgetting that nobody believed in the Chiefs last year? Yeah, Remember? no, that's no what one I'm saying. Believed, no, not at no all. No one thought they could do it. But for sure. But at the draft, you got to love the edge rusher out of K-State that they got Uzuma. He's he's obviously their top guy they got. No but doubt. The rest of them, I, I just feel like they're looking at home run plays. They look yeah. for somebody to step up. Yeah, yeah. Um, they didn't have as many picks as you'd you know, as you hope, but mm-hmm. they're looking for somebody to break out out of that bunch. Um, I'd give them a B-. minus. Yeah. Um, just because it was a must. He's going to be great depth for them on defense. Yeah, but go. that 11 and a half, don't forget, they play the AFC East and the NFC North um, on the schedule. I know we haven't seen how the schedule lays out yet, but yep. that is going to be a tough look for the Chiefs. And no one believed in them last year. Right. I don't know that I'm quite believing them this year. <laughs> okay. It might be the, the lightning bolt well, in my blood. but It could be. I mean, they lost their tackle, but then they drafted a tackle in, what, the third round or yep. something like that. Uh, you might feel like that's more of a Band-Aid than what a long-term fix. For sure. You, you know, right. but— they addressed their holes in the draft, but as to what you said there, Jeremy, they they're hoping that this is going to pan yeah. out. You, mm-hmm. you know, and you got it's a quarterback league, and I don't know if you can and get much best. better. <laughs> uh, real quick, you, I'm going to out you here. You're a Chargers fan. Absolutely, there's so much buzz about them and the Broncos last year. Where are you sitting with them uh, this year? Well, there should be zero buzz with the Broncos this year, and I love <laughs> yeah. that the Chargers are kind of kind of fly under the radar a little bit. Mm-hmm. We they won't haven't. be everybody's dark horse pick. We right, won't right. be everyone's favorite. Um, hopefully, we get to go in and uh, get a little healthy. Um, <laughs> Herbert's going to start throwing here soon, so that's going to be a good deal. But in the wide receiver room, I love what we did. Yeah, uh, oh, for so sure. We not only have uh, you know the vets coming back, which there was some concern that we were going to you know, mm-hmm. be releasing Keenan Allen, but we upgraded there in the draft and got our speedy guy that we need as well. Yeah, so I, I, I just love uh, kind of how we're sitting, where we upgraded on offense where we need to. Herbert's yeah. going to come in healthy, yeah. and we are not <laughs> the favorite of the people, yeah. which, yeah. you know, we will charge for this thing. Yeah. So we yeah. can't be the favorite in yeah. order to yeah. be successful. For sure, yeah. and just like you're saying, the books have reflected that. Odds to win the AFC West right now. Chiefs minus one sixty five. LA Chargers right behind them at a plus three forty, and then the Broncos all yeah. the way at plus five fifty, and then the LA Las Vegas yeah. Raiders all the way at plus eleven hundred. So the Chiefs are way out front, and you know the Chargers are kind of riding yeah. under you know the wave. Uh, it's a lot better than it has been in uh, past years when they're expected to beat the Chiefs and expected to be the top overall. Play uh, yeah, team yeah. in the AFC West, so I like that as well. That that might be your best uh, value bet as far as winning the conference for sure. Because there's nothing there for the division. Yeah. All right. Well, uh, yeah, that's what I meant. Uh, well, let's move. You mentioned the Broncos. Let's yeah. talk about the Broncos. A 
lot of buzz, especially locally and out in western Nebraska. Uh, a lot of grades coming in, C+, mm-hmm. plus, B-, minus, B+, plus, what, you know, whatever. Uh, I do like Marvin Mims, their first-round yep. pick, and you, you got to think Russell Wilson, if his arm's still attached and he can throw the ball forward, he's going to like Mims as well. Yeah, Andy, I mean— the thing with the Broncos, the trade for Russell Wilson cost the team <laughs> first and second round picks in this year's draft. The first round pick gained from Miami for Bradley Chubb was used to hire Coach Sean Payton. Yep. Uh, Mims yep. will outperform his draft status as a playmaker inside and out, but uh, he, he, he's much like a uh, you know Emmanuel Sanders to me. Like he's mm-hmm. almost like the same player. So you know right. Broncos will like that, but. Uh, I think the team found appropriate value with its third round picks, but you know, uh, how can you get too excited about? Yeah, no, third rounders. They added, you know, you know a tight end, Adam Trowman. Uh, I don't know. I don't like the Broncos. I think <laughs> I think that they are actually going to be the worst team awesome. in the AFC West. I like the Raiders even better than them. Uh, and you know you're going to find a lot of people that agree. They did re-sign Jerry Judy. I think I saw that. They they got him locked up. Uh, how do you feel about the old Broncos? Marvin Jerry. Mims is the pick, right? Yeah. For sure. Brought that up. Uh, it led me to think that maybe Sutton or Judy weren't going to be around, but that's not the case. So mm-hmm. um, that's a very good wide receiver room. I love Drew Sanders, the linebacker in the third round. No he, doubt. he was projected as a top 25 at some point. Yeah. Um, but he kind of fell down. So right. that could be good that value happens. there in the third. But this is uh, the Broncos, and this is Russell Wilson's life now. It is. Um, I think we're going to see more of that Russell Wilson and the seven or the eight and a half. Uh, range for wins. I, that's an easy under for me. I think it's big no. time under Andy. And the reason that they took Marvin Mims with their first pick, um, look at the offensive production that they had last year, even mm-hmm. when their guys were there. Yep. It was yeah. next to nil. Right. They need yep. new offensive, yep. you know, explosive guys as Mims is that guy, but yep. he was taken 63rd overall. Yeah. You know uh-huh. how many receivers yeah. are taken before him? A lot. <laughs> A lot. So, um, no, I, first, yeah. I'm still, I'm still very down on the Broncos. I think they're yeah. the worst team in the AFC West. Uh, but yeah, that's where I'm sitting. Jeremy, you mentioned you had a line at eight and a half total wins for the Broncos. Yes. Yeah. That's what I'm looking at as a consensus as well. And I would smack that under for yep, sure. 100%. All right. Let's talk about the Minnesota Vikings. Yeah. They got a solid B ranking from all these pundits out there, <laughs> given the Vikings a B. Man, I thought they caught a lot of shade, especially the, fir- the first day of the draft there for taking Jordan Addison, the wide receiver yeah. out of USC. I thought it was a brilliant pick. I loved the pick. Gold. I'm like, what is everyone talking about here? I think they just like it's we're conditioned now. We gotta throw shade at the Vikings. Yeah, no no doubt. It's a consensus A for me on the draft for the Minnesota Vikings. Okay. Jordan Addison, definitely one of the best players in college football mm-hmm. at USC with Caleb Williams last year. Uh the, okay People out there, which would you rather have, Jordan Addison or Adam Thielen? Obviously, Jordan Addison's faster. Mm. Pro- probably not as good as route runner, but he can run the route faster. Mm. Probably, you know, uh, second, second and a half faster than Adam Thielen. <laughs> so you want this new kid on the block. Right. Obviously, I'm, you know, bashing my new guy on Thielen being a Carolina Panthers fan, but <laughs> this Jordan Addison is the real deal. They This is the best pick that they could have done to yep. pair him with Justin Jefferson. It, you know, This is a marriage that seemed like fate. Justin Jefferson and Jordan Addison are going to be absolutely crazy, especially when you throw TJ yeah. Hawkinson on top of that right. and yeah. on top of how Kirk likes to throw the ball around. So this is a offense that is ready to go, Andy. Yep. And the other, the other glaring thing with the Minnesota Vikings last year were their corners and safeties. Guess what they did with their second and third pick? Corner. Corner. corner, D-tackle. corner D tackle. Yes. So they're ready to roll. Minnesota Vikings are taking the yeah. NFC North by storm this year. They're they're winning it hands down. I have eight and a half wins. I'm I like the over here, Jeremy. Where are you at? It's an easy over. You have to easy over. This. I mean, this like is a you, team. Like the eggs, easy over. Absolutely. <laughs> okay, there we go. <laughs> Crack those eggs. It's an easy over. Eight and a half. That's the thing. Is offense carried them at a lot of the season. For sure. It's an offensive. It's going to continue to do so, especially with Addison. My wife had Adam Thielen as her wide receiver two last year in fantasy football. Um, I heard a lot about Adam Thielen. Yeah, for sure. She's going to love Jordan Addison, no doubt, because uh, she will be <laughs> dropping Thielen. So, but they did upgrade on defense in the draft. I love their draft. For um, sure. This team will use their offense again to carry them. The defense isn't quite there mm-hmm. still. Mm-hmm. But, man, eight and a half, are you telling me they're going to be 
They were a 13-win team last year. For yeah. sure. They're be that far off the ball? It's, no. It's literally just hate on Kirk and the Minnesota Vikings in general for always choking. That's just what it is. Yeah. Like, I'm looking at these NFC North projections right now, Andy. Detroit Lions at a plus 110 to win the division is the best, mm-hmm. you know, the odds-on favorite. Yeah, Minnesota yeah. Vikings always— Detroit Lions are the favorites? At plus 110. Minnesota Vikings <laughs> okay. all the way back at plus 350, tied with the Chicago Bears at plus 350. Well, oh, that yeah, I, I agree. <laughs> and, then, and then the Packers that have just ran the NFC North forever yeah, yeah. Uh, at plus 500, obviously, with the departure of Aaron Rodgers. But that is the best value right now, people, on DraftKings right now is what I'm looking at. Minnesota Vikings plus 350 to win this division. The, the Lions are not proven. Maybe the worst draft in all 32 teams, oh, the come Detroit on. Lions. You're being mean now. Minnesota Vikings win the N- NFC North. Best bet, easy. I, I like that a lot, Jeremy. The Detroit Lions, they're the they're the team in fantasy football that you want in the draft. <laughs> yeah, you, you want know, to they're see making them the on picks, the schedule. See some good value drop to the ground. Um, and you can get better. You're a bad team. You can get better for and sure. still not be good. Yeah, yeah. And for sure. that's kind of yeah. where we're at with some of the teams in this division. No yeah. doubt. I really like that Vikings to win the North. I really Plus like three fifty and the eight easy and a half. money. I think the eight and a half's easy money as well. Double them up. Uh, I mean, come on. You got to <laughs> the Packers. With love, yep, and they and they're already saying they don't love him up in Green Bay. Like, <laughs> yep. Give me a break. The headlines have already written themselves. <laughs> no, the second best team in my mind is the Chicago Bears, but there's too many unknowns right now. We don't yeah. know if Justin Fields is a guy yet. We yeah. don't know if this new offense is going to take hold. Right. The only thing that I know about the NFC North is that Kirk Cousins can play football and yeah. he's got the weapons yeah. around him to do it. So that's what I'm taking plus three fifty. Easy money. Lock it up. (laughs) You heard the horn. That means we're up against it. Don't go anywhere, folks. This is WTL. Welcome back, everybody, to WTL. Where's the line? Nebraska's first and only sports betting show. I'm your host, Ann D. Class, and joined by Jabron. Oh, the parlay power. You got it. And we're getting back into your wheelhouse here. The yes, U-S-C. sir. See, we also got Jeremy. Jeremy Odom. How Let's you doing, do Jeremy? It. You know, you gave me a beer. So hey, I'm having a great good. time. Thanks for having me. Yep. You know, FCB, free cold beer. You can't beat it. Can't beat it. Can't. Um, and that's all you're getting paid in tonight, by the way. So. I love it. Okay. <laughs> uh, and that's not just any cold beer. That is from the Nebraska Brewing Company. That's an ale storm. It is. So it takes it up a little notch here. You know, we always they always say level up, level, level up, up, level up. up. That's all we do here at WTL. Ale storm is top level, especially with the beer. Yeah, we gotta level up. <laughs> all right, so we're we're gonna talk UFC 288. Yes, uh, May 6. Uh, things kick off the main card at 9 p.m. Central Standard Time at the Prudential Center in Newark. Such a destination, it, Newark. Everybody wants to go to New Jersey. <laughs> <laughs> Jersey. Uh, and we're gonna start with the main card here. So we're gonna talk straw weights. Yeah. Uh, Jessica Andrade, we've talked about her before. For sure. And Jan, uh, Jan, oh boy, she is a little bit of a dog here. Plus yeah. 160, minus 190, the favorite in Andrade, lady from Brazil. Yeah, for sure. It's worth noting that these two fighters enter Saturday with, you know, opposite momentum. Last we saw Jessica, saw her in her three-fight winning streak end by submission by Aaron Blanchfield back in February. Yeah, yeah. We covered that fight. Meanwhile, Jan just defeated Mackenzie Dern. Uh, via via majority decision back in October to snap her two fight losing streak, so mm-hmm. they're kind of yep. switching in the night here. You know, right, right. like we said in the past, there's a reason why Andrej is still the favorite to win here. Though the 31 year old setback should only give her extra motivation to win this one. Andy Jan thrives at making her you know foes slow down and then outlast them, mm-hmm. but Jessica has the skills and the strategy you know to put that to bed. Uh, Andrej averages six. Point eight four significant strikes landed per minute, 2.64 takedowns per 15 minutes, mm-hmm. which both soar in comparison to Jan's mark at 5.45 and .87 takedowns per the same you know amount of time. So uh, Jessica Andrade got this by easy, uh, but my best bet for this fight, there Andy, is the under two and a half rounds, Andy, and it's sitting at... Plus money right now, Ooh. under two and a half rounds at plus one forty. I just think um, no matter what, Jessica probably mm-hmm. knocks her out in one or two. But even if there is a you know slight you know something that I'm not foreseeing with Jan being able to get a knockout or a submission early, uh-huh. you still got that backbone there. So 
I believe Jessica ends this early, but uh, yeah, under the two and a half is definitely my best bet. Jeremy, how are you leaning on this one? I love Jessica in this fight. Uh, I think she's going to be the more aggressive fighter. For I think sure. she, you know, it's her forward pressure and the striking that's going to get it done. But I disagree with the knockout. I do think this will go the distance. Okay. But okay. Jessica will win by decision. Uh, but you, you know, the, is that is that too juicy for you at minus one ninety on a lot of books? I, I just think it's going to be the smartest play yeah, in this okay. regard. There you um, go. I guess in this one, I, I I really feel she's the type of fighter that's just going to handle business, uh, mm-hmm. but not to the point. I I do tr- I do respect Jan. Yeah, uh, to to be able to make it. To well, the yeah, end. and she's yeah. she's got a great record, sixteen and three professional UFC record, coming off a win on Dredge, coming off a loss. You mentioned that. For sure. Maybe some of that momentum carries on over. It could. Should we move on up to the welterweight one? Let's it's do it. A lot of buzz because we're talking about Gilbert Burns again, the Burnsy. number five <laughs> contender taking on Muhammad here, and Burns, of course, is the favorite, minus one twenty-five. Yeah, Belial Muhammad enters Saturday's. Riding, you know, Saturday's fight, riding a nine fight unbeaten streak, Andy. Yeah. And that kept alive over a KO TK victory over Sean Brady back in October of 2022. On the other side, Burns owns a three and two record in his last five fights, most recently, most recently taking down Jorge Masvidal oh, that was by fun. unanimous decision Man. just on April 8th, Andy. So yeah, I know. just a month ago, this guy was in the ring with one of the best fighters mm-hmm. in the UFC. A lot of people are on Muhammad just because of, you know, he's plus 110 right now yeah. to win. Uh, I really like Gilbert Burns. He, he's, he needs to get back into championship contention, yep. and this will shoot him to number one. You think so? Yes. Bolio yeah. Muhammad is a surging <clears throat> star in this weight class. Like I said, nine in a row. Yeah. If Gilbert Burns beats him, he's knocking on the door, and he will get the title shot. Mohammed is actually the number four contender. Burns is the number five contender exactly. right now. Jeremy, do you, does this make sense to you? With due respect to Gibran, I am going to take Muhammad <laughs> in this go. one. You know, he, he's a fighter on the rise. Um, yeah. He's a better wrestler, and his cardio is better. I, I do think that uh, you, if you can take him at plus money, which you can, yeah, you can. That's the smartest play here. I, got um, you. I love Muhammad. It sounds like the winner of this fight is going to get a title shot. So, For sure. mm-hmm. I, I, I love Muhammad here. Muhammad's a plus one hundred five young man from the United States. He's got a little bit of a reach advantage. Yeah, uh, on, I just that last fight. I mean, when he was with Gilbert. Oh my God! Well, the whole thing is he does he does get into training shots. He does. But what set Burns, you know, a set from everybody else is his aggressiveness. And to what he's saying is, but that is something that Muhammad has taken away from his foes in the past, as he tends to be the victor of slow technical battles, which does not prove well for yeah. Gilbert Burns. But uh, this one, you know, I just think it's going to come down to making adjustments, and I yeah. think Burns has that, you know, veteran in him that he's going to figure it out, or he might just knock this guy out. So I like Gilbert Burns. We're split on this one. Yeah, and I, and I love this welterweight division. And you got Burns. He's actually 10 pounds lighter yeah. than Muhammad. 196, 186 at weigh-in. I think no matter what, something that we can all three agree on is this is the fight of the night this is the on fight. the card. Yep. This yeah, is yeah. this is the best matchup. This is the, the funnest matchup on the card, Andy. And uh, obviously with it being co-made event. You know, yep. You, Dana thinks so as well. Well, let's go to the main event let's here. Do we it. got a belt on the line, Sterling. The Bitt. strap. Uh, you know, I guess he's the favorite here at minus one hundred and five. <laughs> you got Sudo at minus one fifteen. Henry Sudo at minus one fifteen. I mean, they're both minus bits. What's going on here? It's just that. You know, with Henry Sudo, Andy, it's is that it, tight. It, it is that yeah. tight. It's just because it's been a long time since we've he- seen Triple C in action. Mm-hmm. The last time we saw him, uh, he returns almost three years after his last fight in May 2020, which yeah. is something you know he teased throughout his retirement. You know, when's he coming back? And he Aljamain, you know. He's, he's got his belt. He took down Peter Yan in a very yep. close fight. Yep. Took down TJ Dillashaw in a you know a quick yep. knockout victory. So this guy has beaten everybody you know that's kind of ran the division yep. in recent years, other than Triple C Henry Sudo. So I, this is really tough. This is kind of like what we were looking back a couple months ago with John Jones coming back yeah, from yeah. such a hiatus. I um, remember how that went. Yeah, I remember how that went too. <laughs> Henry Sudo Triple. C might be the best UFC fighter that has ever done it. 
He, he's, yeah. he's one of the only double double champs in two different weight classes to ever win two straps at the same mm-hmm. time. Uh, I got to go with Henry Sudo. I think Triple C gets it done over Funk Master, uh, Funk Master Sterling. Uh, I, I really, I really think so, and I and I really think he's going to knock him out as well. And if you're looking for plus money. Henry Triple C Sudo right now by KO TKO plus four hundred. You know Triple C hasn't has been out of the game so long. He doesn't even have an updated photo on UFC. For sure not. <laughs> it's unbelievable on UFC dot com on their website. Jeremy, where where are you lean on this one? America loves a comeback, oh, right? Well, so love a comeback you know, story. and he's a he's a high level athlete. Sudo is the play here. Um, I just want to throw a uh, shout out to Ted Ashbrook. He's our USC guy. There you go. Uh, or UFC guy. I'm sorry. At yeah, TWS, and he wrote a great article about how his camp is so good at fight planning. Yes, and that is going to help him in the mental mm, game. So. Okay. I, with this, with this, uh, the odds looking at maybe a toss up. I'm loving the high caliber athlete with the with the brains. So that's who I'm going to take. He gives up so much weight, so much height. I mean, all the measurables. He's been out of yeah. it. I, I, if I'm just looking at paper, I'm saying this is Sterling all the way. And oh, by the way, he's the guy with the belt over his shoulder. Yep. Yeah, for sure. And you guys are trying to steer me in the opposite direction. Way. But. Uh, <laughs> yep. I mean, no, I, no, we hear what you're saying, Andy. Uh, the last time Sterling lost a UFC bout, he was knocked out in the first round against uh, Marlon Morales, uh, who was another fighter, uh-huh. who, who he had a clear reach advantage over. Yeah. I trust Sudo to lean on his ground skills early early on in order to open up a KO opportunity for himself. Uh, the last time Sterling lost a UFC bout, you know, I, I just think it was to the exact same guy as Henry Sudo is right now. He's going right. to use that. He's going to use that. Sterling's going to come in overconfident. I've already seen that in every interview that he's done. He's got a dope uh, kid-and-play type of uh, high top, flat yeah, top. Yeah, he's I mean, Will it, Smith it, from Fresh it, Prince of oh, yeah, Air. He is Fuckmaster. He brings uh, the swag. I'm, I'm, I totally <laughs> understand that. But this is a guy that can shut him up. He's going to knock him out. <laughs> Henry Sudo by TKO plus 400. I think it's a play of the night. You got anything to add to that, Jeremy? With the hairstyle, that means his entrance is going to be great. Yeah. And when Buffer, <laughs> he's a showman. When Buffer tells us where he's fighting <laughs> from, it's going to be awesome. Oh, right. Okay, okay. It's going to be Sudo. But then after the bell, you're saying yes. Sudo. <laughs> All right, Mr. Parlay Pound. Yes, sir. The folks waiting this yeah. entire time. You are the parlay. You have to have a parlay. But- I do. I got a three teamer, Andy, for Saturday night. Miami Heat. We talked about it earlier. Minus one fifty money line. Check that one. Henry Sudo minus one twenty. We just talked about it. Check that one. Gilbert Burns minus one twenty five. <laughs> Putting twenty five dollars on this three teamer to receive one hundred and twelve dollars in the bank. All three of these are hitting. Yep. Easy money. Uh-huh. I, I usually like to poke holes. <laughs> I usually like to poke holes in it, but I, I think I, I think I can get on board with them. Jeremy, where are you at with this? It's not going to win. I mean, <laughs> it's Muhammad. I so it's, <laughs> I, I did pick Burns over him, so yeah. yeah. yeah no, it's all good. I so wish you luck. just do a yeah. two-teamer between the Heat I wish and Sudo, and then he's with me. <laughs> so that's what you're saying. Just just pair it down to a two-teamer. Absolutely. Heat and, and Sudo. And then, there it's perfect. Go. There so you if go. You're, yeah, if you want to roll with uh, Tail the Parlay Pounder and make it a three-teamer, if you, or if you're going to fade him, just make it a two-teamer and jump on the Jeremy board. you got to yep. learn to adjust, right? you, you got to learn to adjust. Yeah, that's what it's all yeah, about. And I do smart. believe that the Miami Heat and Triple C are the best plays on it, so I agree. There we go. I we Well, we actually end up having two Parlay plays here. For then. sure. I mean, you couldn't ask for more than that. No, you love it. Well, Jeremy, I got to tell you, thank you for, for joining us here. Uh, where can folks find you again? They can find me at J.O. from Nebraska on Twitter. And also you can find uh, everything I write at TWSN.net. TWSN.net. And that's a uh, the right way the right sports, way sports network. network. Heck yeah. yeah. Really good stuff over there. Uh, really enjoy uh, following you past couple of months. And you got some really good baseball articles uh, that you recently posted on there. So definitely, folks, thank you. go check them out. Well, that'll about do it for us this week on WTL. Be sure to follow us on ESPN Tri Cities Radio. Twitter, and our YouTube channel. That thing's been growing, been a lot of fun. We got shorts on there, some short picks. We also got daily picks on TikTok. Yeah. Look us up, folks. For Jabron, the par, lay, pounder, I'm Andy Klassen. Thank you for listening. This has been WTL. <laughs>